As shares of meme stocks, as we were talking about, GameStop, ticker GME, soaring over the last two days, up 200% here. To remind viewers, a meme stock is a company that has gained viral popularity online. The excitement or frenzy around the company usually occurs on social media platforms. And then the results, yeah, big price swings. So the recent price action was spurred by this, just this, just a man sitting there, then leaning forward, but it's because of who it was tweeted out by. The return of trader and YouTuber Roaring Kitty on X, formerly Twitter, after nearly three years of a posting hiatus. Roaring Kitty, uh, AKA Keith Gill, is known for helping ignite the meme stock frenzy of GameStop back in 2021. Oh, by the way, that figure has a remote controller or the gaming remote in its hands. But anyway, our next guest says that there's more to the frenzy than just the return of Roaring Kitty. Here with more, we've got Matt Kors, who is the uh, host of the Matt Kors Show. Matt, always a pleasure to speak with you, get some of your insight here. Uh, we should kind of lay it straight for a lot of the folks who are watching here. Your, your position, you're not in GameStop or AMC right now, are you? Yeah, I actually, unfortunately, uh, kind of missed the boat on this recent swing to the upside. And as much as I get that there's a lot of quote unquote degeneracy and YOLO and that type of thing, obviously you still want to approach it with some semblance of risk and I missed the boat, but hey, the play's not over. You never know if there's going to be some sort of dip opportunity. And so with that in mind, what should people be watching out for as they're looking at stock charts like GME, like AMC, and particularly where some of this frenzy has pushed the uh, price action higher by 200% in the past couple days here for GME particularly? Oh, phenomenal question. I think one of the main things to hear about this play and what's going on is it's very similar to 2021. This is the resurgence of meme mania, if you will, which means all the discussion about fundamentals, is it fundamentally fair, overvalued, undervalued? I would actually contend, just throw that out the window. Right now, this is much more of a social rebellion than anything else. And then you have tickers such as GME and other ones that are just the representation. They are the vessel of that social rebellion. So I get that a lot of people wanna dive into the fundamentals and that's great. And I think that has a place in all forms of trading and investing, but specifically investing. This is much more of riding that, almost that meme social culture. So for me, and this is some of the harsh lessons that I personally had to learn from 2021, 2022, and 2023, is ride the trend. As long as the party is on, I personally have no issue with being at the party and keeping my position. But the harsh thing that I learned in 2021 is when things turn, they turn violently. So I think every single person, if you are willing to take the higher risk, higher reward setup of getting into the play, don't just go with the start. You have to have some sort of exit plan. And I understand right now there's many people watching this. There's many people who are going to react to it. who are going to be angry that I'm just not, I guess, singing the accolades of diamond hands. But in my mind, what's the point of taking such a risky play if you're willing to say, hey, I'm never going to take the money no matter what? At a certain point, we're all in this to ideally improve our own financial situation. So because of that, I wouldn't want anyone listening to this, watching this, to fumble such an amazing opportunity. Here's the interesting thing, and I'll layer this on, because there's kind of a, a same, same, but different. Same, same in terms mm -hmm. of it the run up in price action that we've seen and a lot of people capitalizing or trying to hop in on the momentum trade and in the same names as before. But what's different is we're not going to perhaps see Robinhood hop in and say, all right, we're halting trading in these stocks once again, because there's a different mechanism that's been put into place since then. They've learned from that mistake. There's also, of course, the added element of, all right, sure, we'll see the volatility trading pauses like we saw out of the gate this morning that are typical but at the same time, there's, it doesn't sound like a major or sweeping regulatory force that's going to hop into it at this juncture. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you believe differently. Yeah, I, I think you touch on uh, quite a few things there. Obviously, the game is slightly different. Uh, just to take, a, I guess, a step back and talk about how the narrative itself is slightly shifted. I think it became a true viral phenomena in 21 just because people were getting stimulus checks. They were locked inside. There was a desire, a need for some sort of com community. And because of the rules at the time, it had to be a digital community. Right now, that's a little bit different. And also the money situation is a little bit different because interest rates aren't at zero. We're right. not getting quantitative easing. We're not getting stimulus checks. So yeah, the money is different. And as you alluded to, obviously the players have learned. Hedge funds have learned, regulators have learned, the DTCC. There's a bunch of different rules, but on the flip side, so has the retail community. And well, I guess I should say, at least I hope they learn how to play the, I guess, round two, if you will, a little bit better. 
But with this, it still inherently always boils down to risk, reward, supply, demand. These are going to be some axioms that are going to be present no matter what. So with that being said, I truly believe this is an opportunity. But in terms of what you're going for, I think that's individual. I think some people want this as an investment, which if you think of it that way, this movement means nothing to you because you're going to be in it for one, two, three decades. If you're just trying to make a stand against the man, well, obviously bet a little because you're preparing for it to go to zero. But then if you're thinking of it as an active trade, obviously you have to be disciplined and stick to not only your entry, but also your exit plan. Right. So I, de depending on who you are, I think you have to play it accordingly. If they're playing it as a trade, then where do you believe, and we only have 30 seconds, where do you believe that that next investment post a momentum trade will kind of flow towards for a lot of these investors? So in my opinion, these actually aren't investments. There's other opportunity. And with respect to capital efficiency, I think there's better investments. But in terms of trades, these are prime. And in the words of the late, great Jim Simons, the trend is your friend. So as long as the trend is there and persistent, I would be in the play. If I think that the trend's over, I would take my money and move on to the next trade. Matt Kors, host of The Matt Kors Show. Matt, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. See ya.